Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, this is my feedback on your previous uh, assignment about descriptive writing. Yeah, yeah basically that you able to write descriptive paragraphs, but you know, uh, well, uh, you have to be able to magnify the what is it, vivid image of this mind, yeah? So you need to learn more language uh, styles especially, okay? So I'd like to uh, share with you, I'd like to discuss with you the language styles that can uh, give uh, much uh, deeper effect on uh, with this mind, okay? Well, <coughs> What is it? Yeah. Here. So, let's see the descriptive language that you need to learn. Yeah? Is, uh, it is used to help the reader feel almost as if they are part of the scene or event being described. Descriptions is useful because it helps readers engage with the world of the story, often creating an emotional response. It can help readers visualize what a character or a place is like. Okay, so I have eight techniques here for you to learn and practice. Let's see technique number one. We can use Simile. Have you ever heard about this? Simile is a descriptive technique that compares one thing with another, usually using as or like. Look at an example. The trees stood the tallest house. So you want to say that the trees are very tall. So you compare the trees with towers. Yeah? The trees stood as tall as towers. It is more effective in uh, creating uh, the sense of image uh, in the design. Yeah? Okay. Number two is called uh, metaphor. So it is a descriptive technique that names a person a thing or accent as something else, yeah? Name a person as something else. Look at the example. The circus was a magnet for the children. Actually, what I want to say with this, yeah, that the children are really enthusiastic, are really interested in watching the circus. So it is like a magnet, yeah? Okay, circus is actually a circus, but you uh, name it as a magnet. Yeah, to give a uh, deeper uh, mental image. Yeah? Okay, next one. The third one is hyperbole. Hyperbole is the use of obvious exaggeration yeah? uh, for rhetorical effect. Exaggeration make it uh, much bigger, but not in the size of uh, the object, but this is the rhetorical effect yeah? that can provoke uh, visual image. Yeah? Okay. The sun scorches through the day. Scorch means burns. Yeah? Actually, we want to say that the sun is shining very brightly and it's really hot that day. So, you say this. Yeah? Okay, you say it is scorched, it means burns, yeah? Burns anything. Okay, well, next, next one, one is technique number, number four, it is called the personification. Personify is to make it like a person, yeah? Okay, so it is a metaphor attributing human feelings to an object. For example, the sun smiled at the hills really to begin a new day. Actually, what can smile is only human, it's only per person. The sun cannot smile, yeah? But you want to have, uh, you want to, uh, what is it? Uh, 
give a positive feedback yeah, about the day. Yeah, so you say smile, just like a person. Okay. okay. Technique number five, yeah, it is called the pathetic policy. It is also a type of personification where emotions are given to setting and object or the weather. Yeah? So your emotions are given uh, to the setting. Okay. Look at the example. The clouds crowded together suspiciously overhead as the sky darkened. What can get it, what can crowd only a person actually. Yeah? Okay. Next, Next one. one. Uh, Technique number six. Yeah? Oh no, matter of pair. Words that sounds like little make they mean. Like they mean. Yeah? Okay. Okay. I have a meow. Yeah? Uh, what I mean is a cat. What is a meow? Meow is an anomo, uh, matopoic word. Because when a cat sounds, yeah, the sounds will be meow. Alright, okay. Next, Next one. Hmm. The example, the autumn leaves and the twigs crack and crunch on the food. So when your uh, feet uh, step on uh, leaves and twigs, yeah, Okay, especially those that dry one, yeah. Okay, and then you can hear, okay, this crackling and crunching uh, sounds. Crack, crunch, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so this is another here, yeah. Next one, next, next technique is uh, oxymoron. What is it? It is a phrase combining two or more contradictory terms. Contradictory means the opposition. Yeah? Look at the example. There was a deepening silence. You know, silence means that you don't hear anything. But you use deepening. Deepening it the sounds that can make your ears very hard. Okay, so it is in contradictory, but to give the effect of uh, Fifi, the uh, what is it, mental image, yeah? and then this is the last technique that can use in your descriptive writing. That is emotive language, yeah. The language intended to create an emotional response to provoke your religious uh, feeling, yeah. Look at the example: a heartbreaking aroma of death filled the air as he surveyed the devastation and destruction that it had befallen them all. Heart beating aroma, devastation and destruction. Yeah? All right. Those can provoke the readers, the readers uh, mind. All right. <coughs> okay, everyone. That's a technique that you can use yeah, in your descriptive writing. Okay. Then I have to give you an example. Yeah? Okay, here. Yeah. So look, look at the example below, and then look at how the writer uses the descriptive techniques to create the vivid setting uh, for the reader. Yeah, and see what styles you see. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. The ground crumbled like sand under my feet as I heaped another step towards the sun. Looking below, the trees with dots to my squinting eyes in the midday heat. Beating down upon my back, the sun was relentless as I wiped the drips of salty sweat from my neckline. The silence of the charms uh, below was deafening. Suddenly, eagles broke the silence and screeched above me in in hunger. Okay, let's <laughs> see. Uh, you see, what is written here can, you know, uh, magnify the visual image in reader's mind. I hope you can write better next time by using the techniques that I have taught you. Thank you very much. See you. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum.